Hello and welcome back. Today we're working with binomials and we're multiplying two binomials using the FOIL method. So let's get started. The two binomials we have are 2x plus y times 4x minus 3y. And we know that it's multiplication because they are next to each other and they are both in parentheses. So when you start out with the FOIL method, you are going to multiply the first term of one binomial times the first term of the second binomial. And then you're going to multiply the outer two terms of the whole thing. And then you're going to multiply the inner two terms of the whole thing. And then you're going to multiply the last terms of both binomials. So let's give it a try. The first terms are 2x and 4x. So we're just going to multiply 2x and 4x. And our answer here is simply going to be 8x squared. And it's x squared because when, you mul when you're multiplying um, these variables with exponents, they have an exponent of 1. It's an implied exponent of 1. And since we're multiplying, we're just going to add those 1's together. So it will be x um, to the power of 2, or x squared. OK, moving along. We've already done that, so let's do our outer terms. And the outside terms of the entire problem are 2x and 3y. So let's write that out. 2x times 3y equals 6. I'm sorry, there's a negative, negative 3y. Be very careful. <laughs> equals a negative 6xy and let's move on and do the inner terms so the inside of the whole thing we're seeing y and 4x so let's multiply that y times a positive 4x equals 4xy and the very last thing we're going to do is multiply the um, the last terms, the last term of the of the first binomial and the last term of the second binomial, like so. So that's y times a negative three y. And there is imp implied uh, there is an implied exponent of one on these y's, so the answer will be will be negative three y squared. Okay, so let's look at what we have. We have eight x squared, a negative six x y, a four x y, and a negative three y squared. Is there anything that we can do uh, to simplify this? Can we combine anything? Well, of course you will always be able to combine the outer and the inner. So the answers when you multiply the the outside hold on. The answers when you multiply these two outer terms and the two inner terms of the whole problem together. This is the outside terms of the whole problem in the two ones that are inside of the whole thing together. Those will always be able to be combined. You'll always see they have the same variables. So our negative 6y and our 4y will, um, when we combine that, will end up with a negative 2y. So 
and we're just going to move this over 8 x squared those combine to a negative 2y at the bottom we have a negative 3y squared can we combine anything further well the um, variables and the exponents will not allow us to combine anything else so the final answer for this is simply going to be 8x squared minus 2xy minus 3y squared and there you have it okay let's do another one okay let's do 2x plus 2 times x plus 5 these are the first terms the first terms of each of the binomials so we're going to start there and 2x times x is simply 2x squared the outside terms of the whole thing are 2x and 5 so we're going to multiply 2x and 5 and we'll end up with a 10 yeah 10x the inside terms of the whole thing are just 2 and x so we have a 2x and you can already notice that the outside and the inside uh, the product of that multiplication the products of those you can always combine them for some reason they always end up with the same um, same variables and uh, and raised to the same power okay um, so we have one more and that would be the last the last terms of each of the binomials the first one and the second one the very last terms they have you multiply them together so that's a 2 times a 5 which gives us a 10 so let's go ahead and combine these the 10x and the 2x will bring us a 12x so we have a 2x squared a 12x and a 10 can we simplify any further no we cannot so the answer here is simply going to be I usually like to change the color when I when I do the answer 2x squared plus 12x plus 10 and that's it okay let's do one word problem really quickly okay this one says the length of a rectangular swimming pool the length of a rectangular swimming pool is x plus 3 feet and the width is x minus 5 feet. How many square feet are contained in the area of the swimming pool? Okay, so let's start by multiplying these two terms together so that we can figure out how many square feet are contained in this rectangle. x plus 3 times x minus 5 or length times width okay so there's an implied 1 as the variable for each of these x's so when you multiply them together that's an x squared um, the outer term here will be negative 5x the inside term would be a positive 3x and the last term 
will be multiplying to 3 and the negative 5 because they are last in both of these binomials. That last term is going to be a negative 15. Can we combine anything? Yes, we can combine the inner, um, the outer and the inner. So, we're going to end up with a negative 2x when we combine those. So we have an x squared, a negative 2x, and a negative 15. Can we simplify any further? No, we cannot. So the answer is simply I'm going to go ahead and put this just right here. The answer is simply going to be x squared minus 2x minus 15. And there you have it. So, practice a few of these and if you have to look at something like this up here, if you have to look at something that tells you the order to go in or um, that's okay if you need to do that. Or another thing you might want to do is write out, I only put first, outer, inner, last, but it might be helpful for you to put more information like first terms of, uh, first terms of each binomial, um, the outer terms of entire problem, inner terms of entire problem, last terms of both binomials. I mean, it might be helpful for you to write more information out when you first start doing it doing this. Usually when people are looking for help with something like this, because you already know how to multiply, um, you already know how to multiply these with the variables by the time you get to this section. So usually it's just an issue of trying to figure out what first, outer, inner, last actually means. So draw lines, if you need to draw lines, um, and write out more information for each of the definitions and then look at that piece of paper and refer to it every time you do a homework problem and pretty soon after you've done 10 or 15 of these you will get the hang of it and you'll know what first outer inner last actually means and you won't have to look at anything so that's what happens just get through the first rough patch and everything should be okay all right, stay tuned for the next video, and we'll, we will continue working with um, polynomials. Thanks.